This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best all-in-one platform for any of your website building needs. Hey guys, it's Celestia, and I recently got some very angry emails. Several artists were all yelling at me at once, some respectfully and some with such vitriolic hate that I was sincerely taken aback. Because to my limited understanding, one of them accused another one of using AI to generate their art only to pass it off as their own. Now, the accusations were so disjointed and confusing and all over the place that I still don't fully even understand the scope of the claims that were being made or what exactly happened, but if I am getting the vaguest gist of things right, the artist being accused of AI was being accused based exclusively on the basis of them not being good at drawing hands. Because AI is so notorious at this point for getting hands egregiously wrong, the fact that this artist's work had significant anatomical errors in the hand area specifically was apparently enough to warrant an entire Twitter thread quote unquote exposing them for using AI, even when nothing else about their art would have suggested that in the slightest. Even the mistakes in the hands, the sole basis of the claim, didn't look like the kind of mutated merged extra finger monstrosities that AI would produce, but rather just like the mistakes that a newer artist still learning how to draw one of the most difficult parts of the human body would make. The artist calling them out for this proceeded to then call out myself and many others as being pro-AI for not making videos covering the topic and helping them slander this artist based on these unsubstantiated claims. Which was when I officially decided to check out of the situation and leave it alone because if that's not bad faith, I don't know what is. So while I didn't engage with that situation and still don't plan to, it did bring my attention to an increasingly prevalent problem. Artists being accused of using AI with little to nothing backing up those claims, simply because the advancements that AI image generators have made are so impressive and significant that everyone is in an increasingly justified state of fear and paranoia that they won't be able to tell if what they're looking at was made by a human or a machine. And I understand why people are so quick to accuse each other of using AI. You'd have have to make a concerted effort to scroll online for longer than a few minutes without coming across a headline about another so-called artist deceptively and maliciously trying to pass off AI-generated images as their own work, or another thread about this week's newest Twitter user outed for using AI to generate or assist their new art. People are using this technology dishonestly and exploitatively, and there's no shortage of artists that are doing so without disclosing that fact. Artists, and even just online users as a whole, have every reason to be suspicious of each other these days, because with every passing day, it's hard harder to tell whether or not art was AI generated or assisted, and it's subsequently harder and harder to just take an artist's word for it when they say it wasn't. I don't think it's a bad thing to be cautious and critical and examine the art that we see closely to determine whether or not it was, as its poster would have you believe, human made. In fact, I think it's more important than ever to do just that. But at this point, I've seen artists accused of using AI because they drew hands wrong, because there are too many mistakes in their work, because they improved too quickly, because their style is too similar to AI, because their rendering style is too smooth. It seems there's no reason too small to accuse someone of using AI, even if that reason could just be explained away as an error or stylistic choice on their part. It's led to massive paranoia on both sides. AI has gotten good enough that viewers are so afraid of being duped by it that they question even completely innocent mistakes in human-made art as potential tells of AI use. And human artists are now in a position to be constantly fearful that they'll be accused of using AI based on nothing but baseless suspicions and anecdotal evidence. And it's precisely because I think both sides are completely valid that I'm making this video. Viewers should feel able and well-equipped to question the human-made authenticity of the art that they're viewing, and human artists should be able to share their work online without facing unwarranted accusations of AI use from people who don't know what to really look for when recognizing AI's red flags. So today, I'm gonna go over those red flags, AI's many possible tells, so to speak, that when present in significant enough quantities, may warrant legitimate suspicion and scrutiny. I've gone through a multitude of different articles online as well as threads from users on both Reddit and Twitter, all of which will be linked in the description, and will combine those insights with my own to deliver you what I hope will be a comprehensive checklist to help you effectively identify AI art, hopefully limiting the number of wrongfully accused human artists while still empowering individuals to recognize and, if they so choose, disavow actual AI-generated or assisted images. But first, let me take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, a longtime partner of the channel. Look, if you've seen even a handful of my videos before, you already know how passionate I am about Squarespace. I've endorsed them this aggressively for this long because I genuinely believe that they're the best website building and hosting platform out there. An opinion that's been informed by years of using Squarespace to create and proudly host both my personal Duchess Celestia portfolio site and the site for my art studio, Rail Starship Studios. Both were made by editing some of Squarespace's exceptional templates, and it wasn't hard to find the right ones that would be perfect for each one of them given how ridiculously extensive their library is. You can easily filter your template search based on what kind of site you want to build, meaning that whether you want to build a gorgeous portfolio, an online 
online store, a blog to share your thoughts, a landing page for your business, or literally anything else, there's a template waiting for you that can bring it to life. And editing them has never been easier than with Fluid Engine, Squarespace's next generation editing system that lets you customize every aspect of your site with its smooth, user-friendly drag and drop interface. You can even customize it right into becoming a fully functioning online store with tools that allow you to sell everything from physical goods to digital content, something that's even easier with the wide array of payment options that Squarespace offers your customers. They can pay via credit card, PayPal, Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, even utilize flexible long-term payment alternatives like Afterpay and Clearpay. And the tools don't end there, with SEO options designed to get your site to reach as many eyes as possible, visual design tools that help you build brand recognition, social media account connectivity, and so much more. Squarespace has you covered for needs you don't even know you have yet. And you can find out yourself by going to squarespace.com slash duchesscelestia, linked in the description, and use code duchesscelestia for 10% off your first domain purchase. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and please go check them out. All that out of the way, let's get into the video. When it comes to spotting AI art, the most important fundamental concept to consider is that of mistakes. Humans and AI both make mistakes in their work, which is why the most frustrating piece of advice I've seen given when it comes to detecting the use of AI is to look for mistakes as evidence of it, because that's just such an inherently flawed approach. Yes, AI is notorious for messing up hands, but you know who else is? Artists! Artists have been struggling to draw hands for much longer than AI, to the point that even people who aren't artists themselves are likely very familiar with the universal struggle of making fingers not look weird when you're not experienced at drawing them, because of how often artists complain about it. Hands are one of the hardest parts of the human body to draw, and they're one of the most common areas that you'll see mistakes in, especially in the work of beginners. And they're just one of many problem areas for artists. Anatomy, particularly without a strong study plan, is an incredibly difficult thing to master, and errors will naturally be made through an artist's creative journey as a result of that. Just because AI also makes them does not mean they should be a cause for concern. What's relevant in determining whether or not AI was used in a piece's creation isn't whether or not mistakes are present, it's why those mistakes were made. Was it a technical mistake or a logical one? Human artists make technical mistakes. We make arms too long, we put eyes too close together, we mess up how fingers connect to palms and necks connect to heads. We make those mistakes because we're interpreting the ideas and references that we're perceiving through the lens of our limited artistic skills, which may not currently be developed enough to recognize those as mistakes yet. AI, conversely, makes logical mistakes rather than technical mistakes because it can't perceive anything. We as humans may draw a hand wrong, but because we know it's a hand, we're still going to draw it with four fingers and a thumb, attached to a wrist with a palm in the center. Even if it has mistakes, it's still going to meet those basic criteria of what constitutes a hand, because we understand that those criteria are omnipresent in hands. AI doesn't. AI doesn't know what a hand is. It knows what it's been told a hand is. Its definition of a hand is a compilation of hundreds of thousands of images of hands, and while it can generate something that looks similar to those images, it's generating that because it's similar, not because it knows why all of those images look similar. It doesn't know how many fingers a hand has or what it attaches to or how those fingers are capable of bending. It only knows that the term hand corresponds to a certain subset of images of hands that it should reference based solely on the fact that they're tagged as hands. So while a human artist may make the technical mistake of drawing misshapen fingers or a thumb too high on the hand because they lack the skills to recognize those errors, an AI would make the logical mistake of giving that hand two thumbs and six fingers because it has no way of knowing that that's not physically possible. Put simply, AI makes mistakes that it would be impossible for a human to make without them deliberately deciding to. There is no human artist that would unintentionally accidentally give their character two thumbs and six fingers on one hand. Because every human artist knows exactly how impossible that would be on a logical level. Both AI and human artists are capable of making technical errors in art, but only AI is capable of making logical errors. So when it comes to assessing whether or not it was used in an image's creation, the latter should be the primary if not sole determining factor. An AI-generated image and a human-made piece of art could both produce the same anatomical error in a hand. So accusing an artist of using AI based on an anatomical error in a hand is faulty at best and maliciously bad faith at worst. Only an AI, however, would give that same hand the wrong number of fingers, or bonus fingers growing out of or melding into other fingers, which is why those logical mistakes should be the only ones that you base your accusations on. That's not to say that technical mistakes might not also be indicative of AI use, but they should be used as supporting evidence, not primary evidence. If there are only technical errors and no logical errors, I don't believe that's enough to accuse someone of using AI. If there are both, then it would be reasonable to use the logical errors as the primary basis for your claim while using the technical errors as potential supporting evidence. It's not dissimilar to the concept of circumstantial evidence in court, honestly. If someone's fingerprints are in a murder victim's apartment, you can't accuse them of killing 
killing them based on that alone. Those fingerprints could be there for perfectly innocent reasons. If their fingerprints are in their apartment and on the murder weapon, they had the victim's blood on them, there was CCTV footage of them entering the building right before the incident, and there's a text chain on their phone of the victim threatening to expose the folder on their laptop marked furry do not open, then you probably now have a case to claim that their fingerprints were in their apartment because they killed them. Their fingerprints on their own wouldn't have been anything more than circumstantial, but with the irrefutable context of the direct evidence alongside them, they can now be used to support the accusation with vastly more validity and credibility. A good example of this would be this piece. On its own, the fact that the character on the right's head is too big is a technical error that a real artist could have made. And that, in and of itself, isn't enough to assert that it's AI-generated. If you combine it with the fact that their hand is inconceivably warped, they aren't touching the ground, the other character's head is normal-sized, and the bird in the background is impossibly large and has a feather for a claw, then suddenly that technical error becomes supporting evidence alongside all of the direct evidence of AI use. It's because of that important differentiation that I'm going to break my AI art red flag checklist into two categories, supporting evidence and direct evidence. Supporting evidence of AI image generation will consist of potential red flags that, on their own, might not be enough to justify accusing an artist of using AI. They're things that could be indicative of its use, but could also be the result of an artist's honest mistake or stylistic choice. Red flags in this category should be considered when scrutinizing a piece that you're worried may have used AI, but their presence alone without any direct evidence to accompany them shouldn't be enough to inform your conclusion. Basically, it's the sus category, the checklist of things that should make you look closer at a piece, but scroll past it and leave the artist alone if looking closer doesn't reveal anything from the direct evidence category. The direct evidence category, conversely, will be a checklist of red flags that a human artist is very unlikely to produce in their work. These will consist largely of common logical mistakes that AI has a tendency to make that would not, under most circumstances, occur to a human artist to make. I still can't say with absolute confidence or certainty that if a piece contains something on the direct evidence checklist, it was definitely 100% made with or assisted by AI, but I can say that it's very unlikely for these mistakes to be present if it wasn't. We'll start with the supporting evidence, because since all of these AI tells could also be the result of human error or stylization, they require a little more explanation than nuance. The first supporting evidence to look for when it comes to determining whether a piece was made with AI is its line art. Something you may have noticed about AI art is that the majority of it that's done in that anime style that's so popular right now is exceptionally smooth, a trait that almost always extends not to just the rendering, but also the line art. Rarely are AI art lines crisp, hard, and clean. After all, AI isn't drawing one decisive line to establish a form, it's consulting hundreds of thousands of images to turn hundreds of thousands of lines into one. Kind of like how artists chicken scratch their sketches. When sketching, you rarely draw a shape in one confident line. Your brain just interprets all of the tiny lines you made to block out that form as one line, because they blur into each other to achieve that effect. AI's process is nothing like that, obviously, but the end result is similar in that because it isn't actually using one singular line, but rather a bunch of different lines combined, the result does not look crisp, sharp, or clear. It's often more muddled and inconsistent. It's not just that, though. Because AI doesn't really actually know what line art is, it doesn't understand the concept of keeping lines separate from backgrounds or the colors within those lines. As a result, the lines are often somewhat blended into their surroundings, resulting in a soft, smooth-looking, blended outline that further precludes it from being able to be crisp or sharp in any capacity. Now, human artists can achieve the same result with their own line art, either intentionally or unintentionally, so this alone obviously can't be enough to assess whether or not AI was used, hence why it's here in supporting evidence. Not all art with smooth, soft, blurred line art is AI-generated, but art with crisp, sharp, clear line art is almost never AI-generated, at least in most styles, because that's something that AI struggles very much to achieve. I guess what I'm saying is that smooth line art isn't necessarily a red flag in and of itself, but the absence of it might help you rule out AI's use, even if the presence of it can't confirm it. The next red flag is very related to that, and it's the general smoothness of a piece's rendering. As a general rule, AI has a tendency to render every material the same way, with a sort of shiny, smooth, rubber-like texture that's sort of reflective, but also soft, almost like every part of the subject is made of some kind of silicone. Now, that's not a universal rule. It's been getting a lot better with metal and its ability to differentiate how it renders that texture compared to skin, hair, and clothing. And there are some other textures like grass and leaves that are gradually coming to receive some rendering differentiation as well. But in most cases, AI art usually struggles to depict any difference in how light and shadow interact with different textures and materials, rendering all aspects of a piece flatly and with the same smoothed, pristine, silicone-like style. The problem with this is that that's also something a lot of human artists do in their work, whether it's because they aren't particularly experienced yet with understanding how different textures should be rendered, well, differently than each other, or because it's a stylistic choice they prefer. I bring this one up because it's a prime example of something that's pretty evenly split 
output as something that's both characteristic of AI and something a human artist might legitimately choose to do or at least end up doing. And I want to reiterate that as a result of that, it is not enough on its own to warrant an accusation of AI use. I see so many people use, it's so smooth, it looks like AI, as the basis for their claims because of this point. And I want to make it abundantly clear that smoothness without any other evidence should never be enough to throw these claims around like that. It's worth considering when accompanied by other red flags, but not alone. The next red flags pertain to composition and perspective, because they're both things that AI is inherently incapable of understanding. Thoughtful composition on an artist's part is what dictates where the viewer's eye is drawn. A carefully placed character under a canopy of trees with open sky behind them and nothing in the background obscuring the form's outline allows the character to be very easily viewed as the focus of the piece. Whereas if the trees were randomly placed, a bunch of background objects were scattered behind the character, and the character themselves were off-center or too low to the bottom or high to the top, they could easily become an afterthought as the viewer struggles to decide where they're supposed to look. Human artists, to varying degrees of effectiveness, understand this concept. AI doesn't. AI will place objects and subjects with no regard for how that will establish a piece's composition, and while it will consult the compositions of the art it was trained on to inform its output, it has no way of using that information to create a good composition within the context of the new piece it's making. As a result, AI-generated images have a tendency to have compositions that are incomprehensibly scattered, messy, slightly off at best, and glaringly skewed at worst, with no clear focal point that we as viewers feel it obvious that we should focus on. This is only worsened by its tendency to just repeat objects, leading to backgrounds with layers of randomly repeated trees or clouds on top of each other with no logical reasoning behind their existence or placement. This isn't to say that human artists don't also struggle with composition to a degree that could yield similar results, which is again why this is listed in the supporting evidence category. It's a mistake that both a human and an AI could make, it's just one that AI makes a lot more and to a much more significant degree. If a piece has bad composition, that could be because it was AI generated, or it could be because that artist is bad at composition. If it has bad composition and the background also has levels of repeated trees piled onto each other like layers of a shepherd's pie, that might warrant more scrutiny, but I digress. Perspective, similarly, is something that AI struggles to diversify. For the most part, it's only able to accurately depict its subject matter with a direct, straight-on, eye-level perspective, leaving most AI-generated images with fairly flat and unchanging perspectives as a whole, with limited examples of more dynamic work. If a piece is done from a bird's eye or worm's eye perspective, for example, there's a pretty good chance a human drew it. Not 100%, of course, as I have seen AI-assisted and generated work from these angles as it continues to improve, but if an artist's work consistently contains a wide variety of different perspectives, I would say that's a fairly reasonable indicator that they're not likely to be using AI. The opposite, however, is not true. To look at their work, see that they only draw head-on perspectives, and then claim that that's evidence that they're using AI would be unfair. AI can't consistently or successfully depict dynamic angles, but a lot of human artists choose not to simply because it's difficult or not their preference. The absence of dynamic perspectives shouldn't suggest AI's use, but the consistent presence of them might suggest that AI likely wasn't used. Another quick thing worth noting on the topic of perspective before I move on is that AI can be very inconsistent when it comes to that, because again, it can't perceive context. If you tell it to draw a character and a background, it doesn't understand that both would reasonably have to be drawn in the same perspective. The most common result of this is that the character is drawn from a head-on, direct, eye-level perspective, while the background is drawn from a worm's eye perspective, usually in the case of trees that seem as if they're being viewed from below, while the character looks like they're being viewed from eye level. Again, it's a mistake that a human can make too, but inconsistency across a piece's elements like that is a significant red flag to consider given AI's lack of ability to perceive consistent context. Finally, the last piece of supporting evidence on my AI red flag checklist also has to do with consistency, and it actually pertains to style. Most human artists have elements of their styles that remain consistent throughout their work. The way they draw eyes, the way they exaggerate features, the color palettes they use, the brushes they use, the way they render their hair. There are aspects of their art that remain consistent through the majority of their pieces. These things grow and change as the artists themselves grow and change, because that's what style is, ever-changing and constantly evolving. As a result, it's naturally that those elements won't be present in every piece, and some may eventually be phased out and replaced with new stylistic choices over time. I'm not saying that if an artist changes how many sparkles they put in Sasuke's eyes, you should accuse them of using AI. What I am saying is that an artist's style is an evolution, something that changes gradually and with a visible trajectory, through which viewers can observe their journey and the development of new techniques and choices as they're slowly but consistently implemented. Someone using AI to generate their work will not have that consistent stylistic growth, even if they use models trained on particular styles to try to maintain that consistency. If every piece an artist posts has a different rendering style, differently exaggerated features, random changes, and sporadic and inconsistent elements that are not present in their other work, this may be indicative of 
their use of AI. Again, not conclusive on its own, but concerning nonetheless. It's especially concerning when those random stylistic elements are accompanied by what appears to be rapid improvement compared to their earlier work that both doesn't share those random elements and isn't nearly as technically proficient. But again, that shouldn't be taken as encouragement to go accuse any artist who improved quickly of using AI. It's supporting evidence, not direct evidence. You can improve fast if you study effectively and consistently, stop dogpiling artists who got better at art quickly. All right, now that all the nuanced supporting evidence is out of the way, let's get into the more straightforward direct evidence. This section's gonna be a lot easier to get through relatively quickly because it's pretty much entirely made up of logical mistakes. As I mentioned earlier, both AI and humans can make the technical mistakes from the previous section, but only AI is capable of making these logical ones, so their present in art is pretty unilaterally damning. They're also pretty immediately noticeable. In a lot of cases, AI art looks fine upon first glance, but once you start examining the details, it all kind of falls apart. It's these logical mistakes that are responsible for that. First off, hands. I know we've discussed hands at length already, and I lament using that example so extensively so early on because I knew I would have to bring it up again later. But I do have to because I need to really drive home that when people say, look at the hands to spot AI art, they don't mean look for normal technical mistakes in the hands, like incorrect joint placements or impossibly bent fingers. They mean look for physically impossible mistakes in the hands because that's what AI is and has always been notorious for. Mistakes a human artist would never make simply by way of knowing what a hand looks like. Logical AI hand mistakes include adding extra fingers, extra thumbs, having too few fingers or no thumbs, having clumps of fingers without palms to connect them, having fingers growing out of other fingers, having fingers melding together to form some kind of melted finger tarantula monstrosity, and so on. If you look at the hand in a piece of art and think, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's not a hand, it's probably AI generated. Limbs are also worth mentioning in a similar vein because AI also has a tendency to give characters extra arms fairly indiscriminately. Look at this masterpiece where one girl actually has three arms so she can both show her support for her girl here by holding her shoulder and also hold a second gun at the same time because America. It's often examples like this where another character is obscuring part or all of the extra limb where this error is present. Because while AI has a general understanding based on its training that humans only have two arms, it's also often referencing images where one character will have a hand on another character's shoulder or arm while still simultaneously referencing other images where their arm is doing something else too. This results in a phantom third arm because it doesn't actually have a logical understanding that that's impossible. It just knows that the source material is telling it that the character both has their arm doing something and has their hand on the person beside them. It doesn't know that those things are mutually exclusive. Sometimes there are more egregious examples beyond logical defense where it's just full on random ass limb additions, but the point is that a human artist would never unintentionally draw an extra arm or leg on a character, so if there is one, it's probably AI generated. On the topic of random additions that don't make sense, AI loves that shit. Sometimes it's subtle. You'll be looking at a character's hair and suddenly you'll notice that there's just this thing between a strand of hair and their ear. It could be an earring or it could be a hair clip or it could be a malignant growth that they should really get checked out. You don't know what it is, but you know it's not a part of their hair or body or them and it's just there anyway. Sometimes it's more obvious. It's an entire ass object that's unattached to anything but just sort of hovering. Like these two obvious examples where it's clear that the character in both cases is supposed to be holding the sword, but the sword actually just kind of floats near them. You also see this a lot with pens and knives too. Really anything that you could reasonably expect the character to be holding, AI is liable to have near the character but not actually being held by them. There are even instances of random objects taking the form of living creatures, like this owl's wing seemingly sprouting a second bird. Again, this is not a mistake a human is logically capable of making, so it's pretty unilaterally evidence of AI use in my opinion. Next up is the phenomenon that occurs when the continuity of an object is broken in AI image generation. Take this image for example. The woman is wearing a shirt with an incomprehensible pattern of fabric, which is its own can of worms I'll open in a minute here, before the continuity of that shirt is broken up by the strap of what I assume is some kind of holster. Rather than having that shirt continue on the other side of that strap as it would in reality, the other side of the shirt is completely different and doesn't match up with the top at all, as if it's an entirely separate shirt altogether. That's because when a human draws a shirt, they understand that a holster on top of it doesn't affect what's under it. They draw the shirt, then they draw the holster on top, and then they erase the shirt that's covered by it. AI doesn't understand the concept of layers, so it just views the top of the shirt, the holster, and the bottom of the shirt as three separate objects on the same layer, so there's no reason for the top of the shirt and the bottom to have any consistency in relation to each other. This is also why things like belts and straps will disappear if something intersects with them. For example, if a character is wearing a belt but their arm is placed in a way where it obscures a part of it, AI won't understand that the belt should still continue on the other side of the arm. Instead, it would cut the belt off where the arm intersects with it, and then the other half of their waist would just have no belt. It's because it can't understand the continuity of an object 
object once it's been cut off, and just views both sides of a partially obscured object as two entirely separate objects. This is especially prevalent with disappearing straps, ribbons, belts, and so on, but can also be seen to a subtler degree with smaller details. In cases like this, for example, where one half of the bow has frills while the other half doesn't. A human would know that unless it was a deliberate fashion statement, both sides of the bow would have frills if one did, but an AI wouldn't have that same understanding. Another big red flag is when completely separate elements of a piece blend into each other in incomprehensible ways that would never occur to a human. Take this earring or hair clip or ribbon, all of which blend into the character's hair, for example, or this sleeve that blends into the character's hand. AI is remarkably bad at telling when different aspects of a piece are separate, so it applies traits to each of them as if they're all the same, so long as they're in the same immediate vicinity. Even when the objects aren't visibly blended together as if they're the same element, those relevant traits can still be applied. In this instance, you can see that while the AI didn't blend the hair and the hoodie together, it still gave the hair a drawstring because it thought it was a part of the hoodie. A human would never mistake a hand for a sleeve or hair for a hoodie, so this blending of unrelated objects and traits is very much an error that only AI could be responsible for. Shapes and objects that don't connect to each other or have a visible source are also notoriously indicative of AI. Hair that appears to come from nowhere, this dragon tail that doesn't attach to the dragon, the arm of these glasses not connecting to the frame. Unconnected shapes without sources or with sources that they don't attach to are some of the clearest and most well-known red flags of AI, and they're usually fairly obvious even under light scrutiny. Frills and clothing folds that appear to come from nowhere are another common example because they usually look fine unless you inspect them more closely and ask yourself, wait, where did that come from? What actually is that and why is it there? Bulky clothes with lots of frills and folds are often used as a sort of camouflage for these structural inconsistencies because people tend not to pay attention to the details of clothing folds in fabrics that bunch up a lot and form larger shapes, within which the smaller folds seem inconsequential. So people don't pay attention to the fact that they don't actually make any logical sense, so long as the larger forms do. AI doesn't understand the concept of clothing folds or the point of tension that would, in reality, be the cause of those folds, so it just adds them randomly. If objects don't attach to anything or come from anywhere when you look at them more closely and you can't think of a believable reason a human would have drawn it that way, it's probably evidence of AI. Another big AI red flag is when details and patterns are incomprehensibly botched. So, for example, one aspect of art that AI is infamous for depicting poorly is jewelry. Jewelry tends to be fairly specific and detailed, with unique and consistent designs that AI can't adequately replicate. Because these image generators are consulting massive databases of hundreds of thousands of pieces of art to create each individual piece of output, asking them to create one unique thing like a crest or a brooch or a pendant or especially an earring is incredibly difficult. After all, each piece of jewelry it's combining is different. You tell an AI to draw a cat, it's going to consult a bunch of pictures of cats that, while each different, share a consistent enough array of features that the AI knows which ones to include despite the differences between them. You tell it to draw a necklace with a Celtic knot pendant and it's going to consult so many different necklaces with so many different unique characteristics that it won't know which ones to include and which ones not to because the baseline isn't nearly as consistent. The more specific you ask an AI to be, the less effectively it'll be able to generate a particular aspect of an image, which is why things like jewelry are often such dead giveaways. It can't be really specific, so it generates a vague form that looks like a piece of jewelry because it's on the character as if it's jewelry and appears to be made of the right material, but it doesn't form a shape that's recognizable as a realistic, believable piece of jewelry that could exist. It's just a random mesh of shapes. Earrings in particular, as I mentioned, are potentially the most obvious because they're supposed to match, and they almost never do. When it comes to patterns, I'll bring your attention back to that AI-generated shirt from before. You can tell it was trying to generate a pattern, but the pattern itself doesn't follow any consistent rules, instead consisting of random lines because AI doesn't have the capacity to understand that a visual pattern needs to follow rules to actually be a pattern. This shirt is another example. Buttons follow an even spacing pattern on a shirt, but AI doesn't know that, so this one has one missing and a bunch of randomly placed other buttons that are only there because it knew shirts have buttons sometimes, but didn't have the logical contextual awareness to understand that they need to be evenly spaced apart. Another dead giveaway in terms of AI red flags is any kind of text, logo, or watermark. AI can't perceive the meaning of any text within the images it's trained on, nor any text within the images it generates. So naturally, that means that any text, logos, or watermarks present in AI art is going to be straight up gibberish. This may be subtler in cases of background signage or apparel designs characters are wearing, but if there's text literally anywhere on the piece, that's what you should check first, because there's no way it's going to make sense if it's AI generated. Finally, the last red flag on my list of direct evidence of AI use is a lack of symmetry. Again, I'd like to reiterate the same concept I mentioned earlier. AI doesn't understand layers or the concept that
that objects of the same variety should have the same rules applied to them. It doesn't understand that if a character has a ponytail and a ribbon covers part of that ponytail, the strands of hair behind the ribbon continue as one form regardless of whether or not they're obscured by it. It, instead, would view the part of the ponytail before the ribbon as one form, the ribbon as one form, and then the part of the ponytail that's visible again after the ribbon as another third form. It doesn't know that the hair should have continuity independent from anything that might obscure its visibility. This issue is particularly evident in cases where symmetry is expected. Because AI doesn't know that both of this character's pigtails are part of the same hair, they're visibly different lengths. Because AI doesn't know that both of this character's eyes, as members of the same object class, effectively, should look the same, it used different styles to render and highlight each one. Here, because AI doesn't understand that both sides of this ribbon should be folded in the same manner, one side is a bow and a ribbon, while the other is just a folded piece of fabric. It's also often why you see bows like this, where there's only one lower ribbon on one side. Even when there's no overlapping object, cutting off and subsequently separating continuous objects in the eyes of AI, it still has no understanding of the idea that like objects should be subject to the same rules. It doesn't know that both sides of a ribbon are the same object and should therefore be made of the same shapes. It doesn't know that both earrings are supposed to match. It doesn't know that all the hair is attached to the same character. It's really no surprise that objects that are supposed to be symmetrical almost never are in AI-generated images, because why would they be if AI doesn't know they're supposed to be? Now, while that brings me to the end of both my supporting and direct evidence of AI use lists, that is nowhere near the end of the possible red flags that could suggest it. These are just the biggest ones that I've personally noticed and seen mentioned by others online. And big thank you to the users whose Twitter threads of advice provided some of the imagery used in this video, by the way. They're linked in the description as mentioned earlier. As AI develops, these tells develop with it. In a year, it may have grown and improved so much that none of these areas of weakness will be significant enough to be noticeable anymore, and will no longer function as red flags to tip us off. It could, conversely, have developed unexpected and entirely new issues that will help us notice and identify it. There's absolutely no way to know for sure, at least not right now. But as of this moment, these are the most common, consistent, reliable markers that suggest an image was AI generated. And hopefully that information will be helpful for you. I'm really tired of seeing artists' names dragged through the mud over baseless claims and accusations that they used AI just because they made some technical errors, improved quickly, or used a style reminiscent of whatever AI model is popular at any given moment. We're living in a world where even the tools designed to test whether a piece of art was AI generated or not, with the best possible information and algorithms at their disposal, are giving false positives and negatives because even they can't tell. And we're throwing around those accusations based on what, a preliminary vibe check? Artists' credibility and livelihoods shouldn't be in the hands of any internet stranger who decides to disparage them based on suspicions alone. And my hope with compiling this checklist is that anyone who is rightfully cautious and critical of work they suspect of being AI generated will now be less likely to jump the gun and be those internet strangers without thinking about it more carefully first. It's understandable, reasonable, and even advisable in this age to think twice about every piece of art you look at if you feel like something's off and you suspect AI to be the cause. There is absolutely no harm in scrutinizing that art closely to make that determination, so long as you don't act on your suspicions by levying accusations without adequate proof. Be sure you have direct and supporting evidence of AI use before calling out an artist. And remember that they're people too who could be legitimately hurt if you're wrong. But what do you guys think? Are there any dead giveaways of AI art that I missed but you've seen a lot of? Please let me know in the comments because honestly, the more cautionary information, the better. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Special thank you as always to channel members Joseph Solomon, TC Pratt, Zelda Deverack42, Abyss Reborn, Hierarchy Kyle, Kinga James, Cutie Sailor Lovely, Justice for Asterion, and CP Lil Thing, as well as patrons Batman, Kylo, Lou Swanson, Cora Fear, Jamisha Walker, Alangshi, Kim Yen, Crazy Asar, Ken Tung, Grayson Xavier, MG, Blomage, TC Pratt, Finn, Grim Spectre, Celine Merriman, Ash, Eldritchia, The Stray Dog, Allura, Greg Noble, Decagullen, Jenny Chen, Captain Reku, Ryan M. Williams, Catbus, Alec Reinekinen, Mac, Lucia Majiki, Selena Bibi, Alexa Mike, Pride Day, Totally Shogun, Shamil Sheep, and Insomniac Sleep Schedule. And I'll see you in the next one.